So in this video series, we'll go through The Mind Illuminated, a book by Kula Das. And in my understanding, this is probably the most comprehensive and practical meditation book I have read so far. Yeah. So if you're practicing Vipassana or Samatha, which is also known as Anapana, the book gives you a lot of practical advice and benchmarks. So you know like where you are currently and what obstacle you are facing and how to go to the next stage. And it draws from Tibetan Buddhism. So this Samatha meditation practice, a stage by stage practice, is coming from Tibetan Buddhism. And the beauty of the practice is that they divided this on stages, right? So in each stage, you know which obstacle to work with and what practice helps you to get to work with that obstacle, right? Or which intention will help you to move to the next stage, right? So it makes it more accessible. Yeah. So in this video, we'll take a look at like a very high level overview of these 10 stages. And in upcoming videos, we'll go in, in each stage much more detail, right? What are the obstacles of this stage? What are the practices we're supposed to do? What intention we need to set? And how do we benchmark that we are making progress or not? Yeah. So in this video, let's just start with this high level overview. And in upcoming video, we go more deeper. Yeah. So in the screen, you can see there is a picture. This is again com coming from Tibetan Buddhism, where a monk is trying to chase an elephant and a monkey. And there are 10 stages through which he is moving. Yeah. So this is basically the 10 stages of Samatha meditation. So in a very nutshell, right, the monk has two weapons. One is this knife-like weapon and another one is rope. So it's like a mindfulness and intention. He's trying to chase two <laughs> of these animals, elephant and monkey. Both of them are completely black in the beginning. So the elephant is subconscious mind, monkey is scattered attention. And in the beginning, they are completely dominated by hindrances, right? They are untrained, basically, yeah. And there are also a lot of fires in the initial stages. That means there's a lot of effort required in the initial stage. And as you move forward in the path, you would see like less and less fire. That means you need less effort. Also, if you notice the stage one, two are slightly longer. And from stage three, four, five, six seems to be slightly shorter, right? That again shows like initially you need to put a lot more effort, but later it becomes relatively faster to move to other stages. Yeah. Then there's another character in the stage three, four, five. This, there is this small rabbit that represent like dullness, subtle dullness that you work through in that stages. Yeah. And of course, as you move forward, everything becomes more and more white means they are getting purified, right? So that's like a very general kind of an overview of different stages, very nice symbolic representation of what is what is happening in terms of path, right? So we'll go through all the stages in more detail, but in a very high level overview, what is the goal for the stage one? The goal of the stage one in the context of the mind illuminated, right? The goal of the stage one is to basically establish a practice, right? So the stage one, we establish a practice. The goal of the stage two is to reduce the mind wandering, right? What I mean by reduce the mind wandering is initially when you start to do the meditation, you would notice you can stay focused on the breath for hardly a second or two and the mind goes away for like minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes and things like these. So the goal of the stage two is to reduce this period of multiple minutes of mind wandering two seconds and thus being able to stay focused on the breath longer, right? The goal of the stage three is to stop forgetting, right? All these terms we will again go through in more detail once we start stage by stage, just for the high level overview. On the stage three, we work with the forgetting, right? So what happens is like, I am focused on the breath, something happened, right? Some distraction came and I totally forget the breath, right? 
and then something sometime i do a mind wandering and then eventually i come back to the breath but there is a period of time where i'm absolutely unconscious about my meditation object right that is forgetting so in this stage 3 we works with the forgetting till the point that it is okay to not primarily focus on the breath we are still somewhat focus on the breath in the stage 3 and the breath may be on the background but we still are constantly aware of the breath right that's the goal of the stage 3 we are not forgetting the breath right after the stage 3 you reach a first first milestone and the first milestone is basically that you can stay focused on the meditation object in this case is breath but it could be like in the context of vipassana it could be the sensations right but you can stay focused on the meditation object for the entire meditation session the attention doesn't have to be exclusive at this point right it's totally fine there's a multiple thoughts going on and everything but you are still somewhat aware of the meditation object for the entire session right that's a med- milestone one and then on the stage 4 you start to work with uh, gross distraction and the gross dullness so the basic idea is that when you are focusing on the breath right the breath is in the foreground or sometime what happens is there are thoughts and emotions some some of those things come and the breath goes into the background right so the goal of the stage 4 that your breath should be on the foreground all the time right it is okay there is other thoughts and emotions going on in the background but your primary meditation object is in the foreground right the stage 5 and 6 you work with the subtle dullness and subtle distractions so the goal of the stage 5 and 6 is that you ultimately reach a point where your focus is on exclusively on the breath right there is no thoughts and there is no dullness behind the scene right and at the end of the stage 6 which is next milestone you reach a point where you can stay focused on your meditation object for the entire meditation session exclusively yeah and the stage 7 is a transition stage which is what uh, the goal of the stage 7 is more of like a unification of the mind right so basically right now mind is very scattered but ultimately it gets to the point of unified mind so it doesn't really have so many distractions anyway right so all the processes of the mind which are somewhat opposite right now start to unify and then you have this wholesome unified mind on the stage 8 and 9 these are like relatively advanced stages and i don't have those experience myself but on the stage 8 you start to work with the pacifying your senses on the stage 9 you start to work with the meditative joy right not getting overwhelmed with that and on the stage 10 which is the fruition of the practice the fruition of the practice is you ultimately reach a point of equanimity and tranquility right so that's like a general overview of these 10 stages that samatha meditation kind of progress through behind the practice like in each stage you are basically doing certain practice to overcome certain obstacles right behind those practices the meta practice is that you are trying to work with the intentions in each stage right so what happens with the mind right the way we are training the mind a part of mind which is more conscious we have control over right i can direct my breath i can direct my attention to my breath on the other hand how long i can sustain that attention is not in my direct volunteer control right just like what my heart is doing is not directly in my control i can influence it with the exercise and all the other things but directly i cannot control like my heart is breathing right the same way i cannot directly control like how my subconscious mind is whatever it is doing right but we do have involuntary influence on that and the involuntary influences if we hold an intention in our mind that gets communicated with subconscious mind and that's where you start to train the subconscious mind so basically the meta practice behind these practices are that in each stages you are basically setting that different intentions right and you are working with that so that's like a general overview of these ten stages and we of course we go through each stage in more detail in upcoming videos 
and before we close this session i would like to address one issue because this might be the question that might come up in the comments also recently kuladas passed away and there was also some allegation to him about sexual misconduct which he also kind of admitted and he also had some uh, explanation of all these things right so there was some scandal around it for me this is rather irrelevant because like what we are trying to do here is it's almost like we are trying to learn a particular skill from somebody who's really good in that skill right almost like if you're trying to learn to cook you're trying to learn to learn the cooking from a best chef right whether you want to learn cooking or not is a different question right so whether you want to learn meditation or not is a different question and that is something that you need to answer yourself right but in the context of learning to meditate i don't see any issue to learning from somebody who has a lot of experience and it doesn't really matter to personally to me how he conduct his life right whether he was doing whatever he was doing is right or wrong it's just irrelevant for me in that sense given that he has spent his entire life learning the meditation and he has gone through a process of dividing everything and making it accessible to everybody yeah so with that let's start the stage 1 let's start the first interview in the next session yeah